So I want to show you the last thing that I do quite often using Lightroom. It's great for getting my library developed. Now if you're going to do something more like doing prints and doing things like that, there is a print module. It's pretty intuitive. It uses a lot of the same things that we're doing here in the development in the library mode. Same sort of adjustments. Once you know where to look, where to click, pretty handy. The one last thing I want to show you though is export. If I look at some shots and I want to export them out, I can do it anywhere I want. So I'm up here. I have a folder that I have set up for just my best shots. I put them into this folder. So I go through, you know, I've got my high rank shots. I come down here and I'm looking at st shots that are three stars or above. So I bring that down to two shots, two stars or above. You know, I've got a good amount of shots here. Uh, just 116 really good shots that I have, at least on this hard drive. And, you know, I take a look at some of these. If I go over here, um, I'm in the grid view. I could start comparing, you know, if I want to maybe take these shots that I see, um, you know, maybe I want to send out all these shots of the elk. So what's really cool, hold down the, sh the uh, click any button or click any picture, and it should light up. There we go. Now, if I want to take all the pictures down here through this elk sequence, I can hold down Shift, and it's going to select from number 85 here to 92. There's all my pictures there. I could also do the selecting down here. So maybe I want to do this mule deer all the way to the elk. Click it. So, yeah, that's pretty standard. If we go over here to Export, here's where things get pretty interesting. I get an Export panel that pops up, and we can export it any way we want. We've got options within this system to bring up and export it. So we can set for the file size, the file type, the naming, all these nice conventions. And once I have a preset set up, I can go through, hit export, click, bam, all the folders that, and the files that I want go to maybe my blog. I can go right here and I can upsize it, downsize it, do anything I need. And export is where you're going to do your sharpening. You can add a copyright. So that's one thing we didn't talk about in the metadata down here. If there is nothing in your copyright information round at the very bottom of your metadata, you can put something in. So I can go through here and uh, put in the details, you know, copyright for myself. You can do the fancy uh, option. I have just a nice simple copyright signal. But if I come back over here on the export, click it, and add my copyright, it'll actually add copyright Jared Grykuski on the bottom of the picture. When Lightroom 3 comes out, it's going to give you a lot more options on what you can do, but that is a great source and great thing to look at. Uh, let's go really quick to some of the other modules that we haven't touched on. Slideshow, uh, for Lightroom I find the slideshow is very kind of a it's kind of an afterthought option. You really can't control what pictures go in what order um, you don't have a lot of control except how it looks pretty on the screen, not necessarily the order that the shots go in. Print, however, gives us some nice options. You can do some pretty in, uh, pretty interesting things, especially on the preset side. If you want to do a contact sheet, any shot that you take. Now there's all these presets. I have this preset over here selected. Um, this preset over here, let's get down to it, is called four wide. This is pretty interesting. If I wanted to do a shot where I cover all the things that is maybe rodents of Rocky Mountain National Park, there's a shot of a beaver. If I can click another one, that's going to go in on top. Click one here. I'm going to take that chipmunk. It's going to spread throughout. So I've got beaver shots here. And what's really cool, I can click and drag the shot based off of where I'm at. Now where this would be really handy is if I have horizontal landscapes. So I take Instead of going that one, let's click the barn. Let's click a shot up here, the HDR of uh, Trail Ridge. And I'm going to hold down Shift. And that's going to, pardon me, I want to hold down Control. Hold down Control, get my barn. Let's get a shot here of the Golden Mountain Ground Squirrel looking through the rock. Let's find one more horizontal landscape. There we go. This is a neat sunset. So now I can create a sort of almost like a montage what Rocky Mountain National Park is all about and that's what's gonna come out when I hit print so neat features I've come down here on the side I've got a uh, identity plate I can edit this identity plate do whatever I want that's a feature you can do in, in Photoshop you can edit it here very basically um, and do some things you know type what you'd like 
but I find this to be a really nifty tool. Uh, the other thing that I find really interesting is the picture package. Picture package, if you're going to do prints, if you're going to use uh, a larger printer, uh, you know, we got all these controls, bleed stroke, you know, you can play with those. I've got a, a, a black stroke around these, you know, we can take away the inner stroke um, and we can control, but this is what I really find fascinating. If you are a portrait photographer and everyone's ordering pictures of you, okay, Bobby orders three five by sevens, one, two, three, bam, there you go. You got a three by seven, eight by ten, four by six. You know, you just got this whole package. All right, now we've got a lot of stuff. If you're doing this on the professional side, you don't want to waste any paper if you can. So there's a really cool feature over here called Auto Layout, and it will rearrange to try to conserve as much paper as you can is a really neat feature especially if you print on roll paper. For the web we have a lot of controls over here on the right side with some really neat engines. I find though that the web uh, gallery that this produces is pretty elementary. It doesn't give you a lot of options. It's okay if you're going to put something up quick but it's not uh, necessarily showy. Now there are some really neat um, options over here in the flash side. So if we come over here postcard viewers one of probably the most interesting. It took all the pictures that I had in the file in this folder and it's going to put them all together and it's bringing them in and uh, once it's done here I'll show you what this does. It takes pretty much forever if you've got a lot of pictures. That's why you don't want to use this too often on a website. It would take a really long time to load up. So it's taken time and you can see these little postcards pop up everywhere and that's what's really kind of cool. It's taking its time. Here's our progress bar this is what the website would look like and the way it interacts you just click on the picture you zoom in a lot like it would be a postcard and you can take it around it's a pretty neat feature but again it really doesn't give you all the, the control in the world it's a very slow um, loading system so there's some of the features in Lightroom that I use every day and hopefully Lightroom can make the world easier for you